watching for the green light over there. And I have to keep my mic low because if I put it up, Jenny's suddenly <laughs> missing. <laughs> I like that. I'm like I'm crouching down. <laughs> You would like that. Okay, uh, YouTube and Facebook are both live. Let's begin the program, everyone. Here we go. This is Real Ghost Stories Online Halloween 2018 edition. And we are live tonight taking your calls at 216-446-7810. Call in your ghost stories live, and we will hear them and discuss them live on the air. Tony and Jenny Bruski. Live for you for Halloween. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. The phone number 216-446-7810 to share your real ghost stories with us live tonight. And every time I talk... You feel the need to cough? <laughs> Can you tell I'm choking Just over here? Just a little here? bit. So Just doing the intro, bit. I'm like, keep going. You can do it. I think I can. I think I can. And uh, <laughs> that's Thomas, isn't it? Or is that... Uh, it's some childhood something. That is that is that Thomas? The I think I can, I think I can. What is the that? The little engine that could. What what is that like little golden book or what yeah, is I that? I think it's a little golden book. <coughs> Pretty sure. What the hell ever happened to that thing? The little engine that could. I mean that could have been just as big as Thomas. I don't know. Somebody really dropped the ball on You the... have to put creepy faces on trains and make them talk for them to take off in popularity. Children like that. Mm-hmm. Chuggington, uh, that, that's that's the more uh, that's the more modern. That's the the Zephyr train, right? The Zephyr train. That's like what we have in town here. Yeah, that's Chuggington. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's not creepy. He's just more more modern looking, mm-hmm. uh, if you will. <laughs> so, uh, happy Halloween, everybody! Welcome to the program. I am, uh, as we speak, posting. Uh, this out to uh, everybody uh, uh, on all of our uh, Facebook pages, our Facebook groups, uh, and everything else. And I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't mind doing the exact same thing for us. Uh, post it out to wherever you use social media, whether it be, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, uh, Reddit, uh, anything, any groups that you're a part of that uh, talk about the paranormal. That helps uh, everybody know that we are doing this thing live and then in turn uh, helps us get a lot more great stories uh, into the show tonight. Phone lines are open at 216-446-7810. I am medicating my throat tonight with a mixture of lemongrass tea and rye whiskey. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully one of the two does the trick for us here. So welcome, everybody. And if you don't mind uh, sharing uh, this uh, on your, like I just said, when you share it, uh, if you do a hashtag of uh, ghost podcast on it, uh, or if I can uh, just catch it through Facebook, uh, at the end of this thing tomorrow, I'll go through all the shares and someone will win. Here it is. One of these. A spirit flask. And who doesn't need one just in time for the holidays? Jenny carries three of these in her purse. No. She has like a different flavor. <laughs> It, no. it's, you can like make she's like, almost like a full bar, like pumpkin spice whiskey. She can sit there and like make you a mixed drink uh, at the library. Yeah, if um, <laughs> the library, <laughs> the last time you were at the library. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, oh, we had a call, but they left. Uh-oh. I was I was just about to go to them at three six zero. So if you want to call back three six zero, we'll uh, we'll get to you. Uh, but two one six four four six seventy eight ten to share your real ghost stories with us. Would love to hear from you. I'm just gonna move my mic over here so it's easier. Otherwise, otherwise, you're like, like ah, you're not there on camera. <laughs> I don't mind at all. So, we did trick-or-treating tonight. We did. In the rain. Mm-hmm. And uh, at first, we were like, what are we going to do with this, uh, with this trick-or-treating conundrum? Because, I mean, you know, it, it's easy as an adult, I think, to be like, well, you know, there's always next year. But there really isn't, to a certain extent. There's only so many years you truly have for trick-or-treating. Livy is 11. She's yeah. about to turn 12 in a month, or not a month, a week. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the places that do it publicly, because 
you know, there's there's neighborhoods that participate, there's neighborhoods that don't. Yeah. So there's public places where you can go trick or treat. They say 12's the cutoff. So it's like, this is really her last year to to trick or treat. I I, I, I think technically she can get away with it one more Halloween. But yeah. we're at the end of that. But now begins watching the movies that are not ghost not ghostly scary because I can't handle those. Mm-hmm. But like. We watched Halloween, and she was like, "This is awesome." And she wanted to watch like two and three, and and go see the new one. And which is kind of funny because I remember watching um, Night of the Living Dead uh-huh. when I was little. That was the, um, I think, one of the first years where it was coming almost like, okay, you're you're getting almost too old to do the trick or treating thing, and we did that, and. I laughed at it the whole time. And you said that she was laughing at Halloween the other night. She was. She was making, like, side comments, you know, mm-hmm. because there's parts that are just... The whole thing can be pretty cornball, but there's there's parts that are just like she adds in her ab lib, and it's funny. It, it, it's, it's weird to me to think that kids are going to look at um, a movie like that and think it's corny. God. Because it was scary. I looked under my bed every night for like a <laughs> month after seeing that for the first time. And yeah. I was her age. So, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. Call her at three, six, zero. I'm going to go to you first. Call her at eight, one, four. Hang on the line. We're going to get to you second. Uh, so let's jump over to uh, call her at three, six, zero. You're the first one to call into the program this evening. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Travis from Washington State. Hey, Travis, welcome to the program. You got a ghost story for us this Halloween night? Well, of course, I'm a, a paranormal investigator here, right. and uh, got a got a little short story here. We have a uh, giant cemetery here in town called Bayview Cemetery, and uh, there is a uh, big gravestone they call the deathbed. Now, the legend about it is, if you lay on it, it's supposed to take years off your life. Okay. I never really believed in it. And so I laid on it and automatically started feeling a sinking feeling on the deathbed. Mm -hmm. And um, my girlfriend at the time... Sinking feeling. uh, 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 Extrapolate on that a little bit more for us. Like, what were you feeling exactly? Well, it's it's got four pillars. It's a um, concrete slab on top, and it almost felt like I was sinking into the the concrete slab. Okay. And so my girlfriend at the time was holding my hand, and she said that she could feel an energy flowing from me into her hand, which I could feel. It was really, really quite weird, you know? Sure. And... uh, so I decided to, uh, you know, was going to climb off of it because I didn't, uh, I wasn't feeling comfortable on it, of course. So I got to the edge and was going to drop straight down, um, you know, just to get off. And uh, just about the time that I was uh, going to slide off, I felt a pair of hands on my back and it actually pushed me off and I uh, actually crashed into another headstone with my knee. <laughs> What was going through your mind at that point so, when, when you, you're feeling that? I mean, I, I obviously you knew the legend, you knew the story, but what was going through your mind is at, at, when it was happening at that exact moment? At that, that exact moment, I was uh, more surprised than anything, you know. And the funny thing about it is, is uh, my uh, co-founder of my group was uh, doing an EVP session, and about the time that I fell off and hit, we caught an EVP of a of a man laughing. Oh God. What, what do you think it, it, it goes back to? Is it the man in the grave? Is it something else that's in the area? What uh, what do you attribute it to? Yeah, I believe it was the man because originally um, there it was supposed to have his wife buried next to him and uh, she never was. So it's kind of like a sadness thing. It's a make this, make this happen. Do you know where the wife is buried? I do not. Honestly, there's uh, no record of it. Interesting. Wow. Well, that, that, that's a scary story. That is scary. We should go to that graveyard sometime just for a family vacation and let all the kids lay on it and they could make some really fun color, <laughs> right. uh, watercolor I'll paintings. I'll send you a couple pictures of it. I'd love to see that. Yeah. yeah. Do email that to me, Tony at Real Ghost Stories Online. 
Thanks for um, calling in and yeah, will do for sure. Thanks for calling that uh, story into us tonight, and uh, happy Halloween. Really do appreciate you calling in tonight. So we're going to call her at eight one four, and the number, by the way, everyone is two one six ghost ten two one six four four six seventy eight ten. I saw some folks on YouTube asking for the number because we don't have the little bar up on YouTube. But there you go, two one six four four six seventy eight ten. Call her at eight one four. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hi, this is uh, Paul from Eden, Pennsylvania. Hey, Paul, welcome to the program. Uh, hi, uh, uh, happy Halloween. This is, this is a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a fun streaming for tonight. Looking forward to it. Well, welcome to the show. Do you have a, uh, a ghost story for us? I, I, I do, but it's, it's, it's not as scary as the last one. It's, it's, it's actually kind of, um, we'll, we'll call it light. So my, my, my wife and I bought a house. It'd be now about four years ago. And we bought a house. The house was built in 1970. And we never really thought of anything that didn't have a paranormal, you know, anything that being kind of a relatively uh, new house. Um, we were doing some refurbishing to it before we formally moved in. And one evening when we were doing some repairs, the, um, there's a really old, you know, like one of those kind of like uh, cincy 1960s chandeliers that were in the hallways of, of some 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 uh, kind of older houses. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the chandelier move, and it what it did was it rocked, um, kind of like a like a sea dragon. And it hit the ceiling, it went to the other side, and then just stopped. Very just like unnatural. And and I was like, whoa, 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 what was up with that? And then I heard this kind of creaking in the back room. Now, this isn't like my first paranormal experience, so I kind of like spoke to it, and it felt like kind of the energy dissipated. So that was the only thing that happened while we were working on the house. Then um, we, would have, we would have incidences of hearing someone while we were relaxing in the basement where our TV's at, we'd hear people uh, walking in the hallway really consistently. And we were really kind of freaked out by that. What was really bizarre was um, when we had our son, one of those baby monitor cameras, every night would move 90 degrees or wh wherever it needed to be to go from my child in the, in the crib to the window. Every, like, two or three nights. It would consistently do it. And we'd move it. We would attach it. We'd tape it. To, we at one time taped it to the ground. Next morning, window. And so it really kind of got bizarre. And, and uh, we, uh, the, the, how it slowed down was um, my mother-in-law was watching my son one night, and uh, we, were, we were on a date, and she heard the, the footsteps in the hallway, and she yelled at it. And it basically calmed down since then. And we really haven't had a real experience since then. It's just one of those things where, like, I may, maybe we kind of told it that, you know, we moved in this house, we're not going anywhere, but whatever it was, it's just kind of weird that, that her yelling at the it made it stop. Is your mother-in-law like an exorcist or a demonologist or something that you're unaware of? Like not to, not, <laughs> not time I checked, no. Sometimes, you know, they... As a like, fact... During, what's, what's really funny is like it's like the very scientific person who's a registered she, she's a registered nurse, mm -hmm. and I never I never I would have thought of her as like you know someone who even uh, like fully believe in the paranormal to that extent. But for her, it's so frustrating. She yells at it, and it works. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I would be scared as hell of her as well. Uh, if she's able to get like ghosts to go away or or whatever the heck was going on, if yeah. they're scared of them. Yeah. Are, are, are you scared of her? I, 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 I'm really not that scared of them. <laughs> I, I've had a couple experiences previously. Like uh, a really weird one was my um, my family's cottage. My great grandmother passed away there when she was in her in her late in her late nineties, and I remember three specific times I saw this like shadow go from one uh, side of the hallway to another, basically from one to the other. And what was really weird, what really made made me know, is my grandmother with a smell of perfume. Mm -hmm. And it basically, like, moved into the room. You could, like, smell the perfume just extremely distinctly. Yeah. And all of her stuff has been moved out for years. And just, it's just one of the things where it's like, okay, that, that's good grandma. 
Yeah, I, and I, I got one other quick one. But before my my my, uh, my mother-in-law yelled at the ghost, the the ghost would move my wedding ring. Huh. Now this one's really weird. So I would I I, I usually take my, my my ring off for like you know dishes, um, you know cook, cooking dinner, mowing the lawn, stuff like that, and my ring would disappear. And this happened three separate times. My ring would disappear, and the next day, it would be at the front of the the front corner of the dining room table, every single time. And the first time, I was like, "Huh, didn't you know? I I don't remember putting it there." Okay, good. Right. Second time, I was like, "Wait a second. And then the third time, I was actually specifically checking on it every couple hours. And it wasn't until I was um, putting laundry. Uh, d- downstairs, that I heard a movement upstairs, and when I checked, there it is. That's, Which is just bizarre. That's interesting. I, I still <laughs> want to know what your mother-in-law yelled at the ghost. Yeah, like, I what? never got the whole quote. Like, <laughs> it, it must have been interesting. <laughs> what was the convincing argument there yeah. to make the ghost uh, leave? That's, oh, yeah. Uh, that's cool. I don't think it left. I think it just <clears throat> calmed down. <laughs> That's that, 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 that's my that, that's my guess. Cause, I mean, I, I still feel like there's a presence there, mm-hmm. but it's nothing like 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 malicious or anything like yeah. that. So I I personally am not you know worried. It's more so like a human spirit where someone like almost reasoned with it or threatened it, and it was like, okay, right. I got you, got it. Okay, <laughs> let's. I, I, right. I, 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 yeah. As if it were in real life, it probably would also have had the same sort of reaction. Yeah. So. Well, thank right, you for calling right, that in definitely. and sharing those uh, those experiences with us. Really do appreciate it. And happy Halloween. <laughs> yeah, happy Halloween. Take care. Good night. All right. Good night. Let's go to a caller at uh, 661. Caller at 623 and 828. Hang on the line. You guys are next in queue. What's your name at 661? And where are you calling from? Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Heather. I've actually uh, called a couple to, uh, times before. Um, okay. And I'm uh, currently in uh, Texas just sitting in the rain. Um, right. I actually have a question. <laughs> yeah, right. I actually have a uh, question about the previous caller. Did his mother-in-law perhaps had a chakla in her hand as well? Because <laughs> as far as I know, that will scare anything. So oh, yeah, I, I, he's <laughs> gone. So your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, uh, I actually have a couple of stories. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, one of them. Let's see. Uh, one of them, I'll start off with, um, I was actually on the, uh, talking with my cousin. Uh, she's sensitive as well. Um, she's, she's more sensitive than I have, uh, than I am. But, um, so we were actually using this, uh, walkie-talkie app. It was very popular a few years back. And, uh, while we were doing it, I heard a sound kind of like a, like a water trickling, um, uh, right by my ear. And I was like, wait, what was that? I, I replayed the, the audio that I sent to, over to my cousin, and I heard it in the audio. So uh, she actually heard what it was saying because um, <laughs> that's what she can understand. Um, and uh, basically it got to the point where she called me up and was uh, starting to talk on the phone. And um, all of a sudden I was... Uh, while she was talking on the phone, she was actually starting to kind of communicate with it over the phone. Um, <laughs> but while that was happening, um, basically, as she was talking, I could feel my, my entire body um, start getting this uh, tingling sensation. Um, like, I've, I've explained before, like, kind of like how, um, how it would be if your foot was, if foot was asleep. Like that kind of tingly sensation, but it wasn't bad. It, you know, it was ne- nothing negative at all. It was actually uh, quite positive. Um, and basically, what was happening is that she and whatever it was was talking back and forth to each other. And I'm here. Well, I'm here walking around the house. Uh, I, like I'm just feeling this ting- tingling sensation. And eventually, she was she was finished with the conversation. Next thing I know, just kind of just sucked right uh, right up out out of me and uh <laughs> so basically what it was doing was or what we figured was what it was doing was uh basically using me as a, like a little power pack um and uh, just uh, using my energy to go ahead and uh uh communicate 
But it was just, it cracked me up because it's like, well, the last thing I would ever expect for to ever happen is somebody to have a, you know, like, full-on conversation with a ghost over the phone. Sure. <laughs> um, so that that one uh, that one made me laugh, and um, then uh, another one. Um, I was actually ghost hunting uh, uh, at a location in my hometown, and um, there's these uh, two houses. Um, they're uh, they're historical houses that were moved into a park, and um, we went on ahead and was able to kind of con the uh, quote unquote con the uh, security guard saying. Hey, we're doing a school project. Can we uh, go ahead and research it? And uh, he, I guess, he believed us, so we, <laughs> so we just walked straight on in and uh, and uh, started investigating. While I was going around this one house, um, while we couldn't go inside, uh, we were able to look in the windows and whatnot. And um, the first house, I was going around and. Um, I just I went on ahead and started filming with my camcorder, and uh, and pretty much I was uh, looking in through the windows and whatnot. I was talking, and um, from from there, I was just like saying, you know, show me a sign that you know you're here. You know, the stereotypical question. Next thing I know, my uh, my camera showed me the you know. That the battery needs to be changed. A brand new cam uh, camcorder, brand new camera, or a brand, a brand new uh, uh, battery. I just finished charging it. I mean, it, it was fresh and ready to go, and uh, it just suddenly just dropped and, to and was uh, telling me that it was uh, getting changing already. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I go ahead and I had to uh, walk away from uh, from that area to uh, get a new battery, and then as soon as I got probably maybe about 10 feet away from the door, then my uh, my uh, uh, battery uh, came back, and it showed that I was at full battery. So I'm like, oh, well, okay. So I go around, and I start going to this, uh, this other window, and um, I uh, knocked on this uh, one window, and I was just, I was just sitting there, because I'm like, you know what, I, I just... I just had to knock. So I uh, knocked on the window, and uh, not even two seconds later, I heard a little tap, tap, tap uh, right on the glass. Like, it was a not a hard tap, but it was just a little light tap. Um, and it's already known by the locals that uh, that place was haunted by uh, three separate ghosts. Uh, one of them, uh, the uh, former uh, owner of the house, um, after after a uh, uh, suicide. Um and then the other two, uh, one's a, a child, the other one is uh, basically just a lone, lone guy that nobody knows where he came from. He just, he just came. <laughs> but uh, the second house, when we were going around that, uh, my, uh, it was reported to be basically uh, this, uh, the uh, site for a. Uh, Paranormal vortex, uh, because apparently it, it went on ahead and uh, crossed the across the certain ley lines and whatnot. But um, so we were going around. My cousin was feeling, and she felt she just put her hand on the door, and she was like, "Oh yeah, you know, it's it's really charged." So um, we were going around the house again, and I found uh, one window that I can uh, that I was able to go ahead and uh, take a picture in uh, with a camera that I had, and. Uh, I went on ahead, took a picture inside, and all I all I got was white. So I'm thinking that you know what, it's probably something's probably wrong with the camera. So I take pictures in other directions. It, it it's just fine. Took a picture in a uh, through another uh, window. It was just fine. But then I went back to that one window, and it did the same thing over again. But uh, it wasn't just a flat white. It was uh, more textured. Um, so when we're going around, my, uh, uh, cousin, she starts feeling things around and she, she's like, you know, there, there's a lot of spirits around here. They're, they're going all over the place. And, uh, so we go ahead and go back home. We're looking at the, through the pictures. We didn't catch much. 
um, other than the the uh, white photos, but uh, not probably about a week later, my camera, er everything just disappeared. And, uh, it, it, and, uh, it clearly had some sort of a hold like on your equipment of some sort. It, it's very bizarre, uh, to hear, you know, that, that, that all the equipment, you lost the photos. And, and what was most interesting to me about that story is the fact where the, the camera battery dies. But then it came back. And it comes back. And that's not like very common with, with things like that. that that's something that doesn't really, um, usually it's dead, it's dead. Yeah. And I don't, I, that, that's, that's really, really interesting. Thanks for calling in and sharing uh, your story with us tonight. Really do appreciate that. Let's go to a caller at uh, 623. What's your name? Where are you calling from? <laughs> Hello, caller at 623. Are you there? Call Hello. Me. Hello. Are you there? Hello. Hello. Okay. I don't hear anybody. A caller at 623. Let's go over to a caller at uh, 828. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Joe. Hey, Joe. Got a, a story for us. What's your name? Where are you calling? Joe, where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Mary, North Carolina. Okay. Let's hear your story. Okay. Uh, I wrote this in to you a while back, uh, several years ago, but uh, I probably didn't write it as good as I could tell it. So uh, it was probably five years ago. We went to, uh, me and my family went to Braxton, West Virginia. And uh, we get up there, and it's a pretty creepy place. And... Um, feeling some bad vibes, but I was, but the kids and my wife weren't, and we were enjoying the uh, fall foliage and everything, and uh, go back out, and whenever we're driving down the road, my wife, who has no background in any sort of religion or anything, she didn't grow up in church or anything like that. She witnesses something right in front of our car pass across the road that was dark, tall, and black. It was at dusk, and as she was, as it was crossing the road, she looked at me, and I was driving, and she said, Did you see that? And I said, No, I didn't see nothing. What are you talking about? And she said, You did not see that just cross the road. And here I am wanting to see something. I've always been the one who wanted to see something like this. She doesn't get into the ghost shows, the podcast, or anything like that. I listen to them constantly, your show and anything on TV. And I see nothing. And she is just totally freaked out. And we actually drive back that night because I know how upset she was from it uh, about six hours back into North Carolina from West Virginia at the cabin that we were staying in. Okay. Did we lose him? Are you still there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Continue on. And that, that, that was pretty much it. I mean, I seen nothing wanted to, I had creepy vibes the whole time. Uh, no one else did, but then when it came down to when we were going back out, it was just a totally, I could tell that she was completely shook by the whole experience. Did she? And I seen nothing. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, did she expound upon to you, like, what, what she thought was going on? I mean, what, what, what was the reaction? Yes. Uh, it was, it was, uh, actually what it was is at that time of day, the, uh, the, the cabin that we got, the person that told us uh, that we got it from told us that it, you know, you go out around dusk and in that part of West Virginia that, uh, you could go out at dusk and all the deers come out of the tree line and they feed in the, 
yards, the very small yards that are up there uh, in the grass and everything. So we went out at that time, and we were seeing the deer everywhere, and it was great. So we were just riding down this uh, one-lane road, basically, Mm -hmm. and I was driving and looking straight ahead, and so was she. And she just, like, froze up, turned white, and I'm like, "What's?" I knew something was wrong without her saying anything. And I said, you know, what's what's wrong? And she said, you didn't see that? I said, no, I didn't see anything. What are you talking about? I thought she was talking about the deer or, any, or such. But uh, do you think- it wasn't. It was something totally different. It you, was, she said it was tall, it was black, it was slim. I said, mm-hmm. I was joking, so I said, oh, you seen Bigfoot? Sure. She said, no, this was slim, this was tall, and it crossed the road in a matter of less than seconds. Do, does she have, do you think, an ability to see some things that you don't see? No, because I, n- nothing before or nothing since. I asked her about that, and she doesn't want to talk about it yeah. to this day. And that's been probably five or six years ago, and there's been sure. nothing before or nothing since. And um, yeah. it's it's just one of those things that's very, very odd. Yeah. yeah. What do you make of that? I, I almost wonder if it was a shadow person. Yeah. You know, and if somebody's not as into... You know, the paranormal, like you sound like you're the one that listens to the show and maybe have more of an interest than she does. She might not realize that that, in fact, is a type of paranormal entity. Mm-hmm. And, and just the not knowing what it is can be scary enough, let alone telling her, hey, you actually saw a ghost. That could that could be too much. Almost like letting her listen to the show a little bit or, or asking her to, to try and listen to the show may make it a little more approachable and, and open up some some uh, of the hesitation with her uh, as far as realizing there's a lot of other people out there who have been through things like this. She's not alone. She's not crazy. It's yeah. just these things happen. And obviously you can probably try and tell her that, but sometimes it may need like more of that community for her to mm-hmm. to realize that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, because even since that happened till now, I mean, she knows something happened. Yeah. She... Because whenever you mention it to her, she just shuts down. She just yeah. like, no, I don't want to talk about that. It's probably you know shame. It's probably anxiety. It's probably you know not realizing there's other people out there that that are experiencing these things, um, and that that seems to be the the biggest thing that we hear on this show is just the release, the uh, the you know the therapeutic feeling of oh my god, I'm not alone. Other people have been through this. Um, so, I mean, it may not be just the easiest thing of, hey, listen to the show, you'll feel better. Uh, but, you know, I mean, listen to it around her a little bit or something. Maybe that will help, you know, kind of ease her in and, and help her feel a little bit better about that situation. Thanks for calling and, uh, and sharing that experience with us tonight. We really do appreciate it. Let's go to caller at 770. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Cleveland, Georgia. What's your name? What's your name? You there? I yeah. am here. What's your name? Tony. Yeah, listen on the phone. Don't listen on the. Uh, <laughs> don't listen on the uh, the stream. I'm sorry. Hey, it's, it's Craig and Sylvia. Happy Halloween. Happy we love Halloween. your show. Well, Hi guys. Hey, Craig and Sylvia, welcome to the program. You got a story for us? No, just wanted to say Happy Halloween. We love <laughs> you guys and God bless. Oh, well, we need a you. story, damn it. <laughs> no. I remember them calling in before when I was on. I so I, <laughs> happy Halloween to you, too. I'm choking because I'm laughing. <laughs> hey, can I, can, I get a, can I get a flask? <laughs> he wants a flask. Are, are you, uh, are you <laughs> Anyway, we love you guys. We love you guys. Well, and we'll continue to support you. Well, thank you so love much. Love you. And, and, and well, All right, man. Take well, care. While you're on the line, <laughs> best Halloween candy. What, what's your favorite? Oh man, that's tough. Uh, Reese's pieces, I guess. Reese's pieces. <laughs> Reese's right. pieces. Jenny, that's what the Go girls there. The yeah. girls came home with that the most. I was very disappointed to see the measly 
one or two pieces of Butterfinger that yeah. came home because that's, that that's what I that's what I steal did. from them. I steal the yeah. Butterfinger, and it's like now I just don't even care. You'll it's be one hundred percent caught if you steal the one Butterfinger. You cannot pick yeah. just one. You can't pick just one. You no, know that. I know that. Can't lay a finger but, on my Butterfinger, as, <laughs> as Bart Simpson would say. Bottom right. But love y'all, love y'all, love the show. Oh, we love you too. Thank <laughs> you for calling in, and uh, and thanks for supporting the program. We do greatly appreciate it. And of course, he was talking about the Spirit Flask, which is this thing right here. Um, and if you are a yearly EPP, uh, you can get it upon your renewal date. Uh, or if you're a, a monthly EPP right now, sign up for the uh, yearly uh, subscription. You can upgrade at any time. And uh, then you will get uh, this as well. But you have to let me know you upgraded. You have to shoot me an email, Tony at realghoststoriesonline.com. And then uh, I'll get you on the, uh, the next uh, shipment here uh, when you become a yearly EPP at ghostpodcast.com. We still have a handful of bunk bed bells left, too. So <laughs> I bet the post office is glad you're about done with that. I was, like, freaking <laughs> out the other day because I was, I was starting to get ready to send some of these things out. And I... <laughs> I know where you're going with. You're this. gonna start coughing. I am. Um, uh, you want the inhaler? You want to take a take a hit? No. Um, uh, but the other day, I, I I literally I said to you, and I'm not trying to make light of a very dark situation, but I thought, oh, I'm glad I didn't go to the post office and mail a bunch of flasks today. Yeah. Because it's like, it's metal. It's you know, um, you know, it could be mistaken for something else. So I'm just kind of like. And I wasn't planning on doing it. My my plan, I, I I tend to do these about every two or three months. I get everybody who signed up and do one big giant shipment, and and get it all out there about every ninety days. Uh, and 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 we're at about sixty or so right now since the introduction of the uh, the spirit flask. But yeah, I, I could have seen me showing up to the post office and being arrested, and then uh, like, what happened? I was just trying to mail flasks for ghost stories. Yeah, that won't be a, a weird. It's not funny. It's but not it, funny. But it kind of is. But it would have been a weird moment. It would I have know. been like, oh, how do you? Because they're always looking at me like weird. Like I, I bring the big, I, I literally, I come in with a giant box of bells in the manila envelopes. The same size of the manila envelopes that were and, on. And it all jingles when you walk in like you're Santa Claus or some kind <laughs> you of walk at these metal objects in a manila envelope. The same size of the bomber envelopes. Yeah, that's not good. And it's just like, and, and I, and I. It's 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 laziness, I guess, on my part, but I don't put return addresses on them. Uh, oh God, Tony! Well, I, I don't. I, I I print off the address of where it's going, and I trust the postal service to get the bells there. And um, I, I guess I could. I, I I it's just like that's another step. That's another. It takes so literally every time I do a shipment, it's about a four to five hour process. To make sure you're not on a list. I don't, I'm gonna have to put. <laughs> The return address on all those flasks. We'll get like some fun ones with like squirrels or something on the side, or like yeah. a little rose, or or something of that nature, and uh, and put it up there. But no, I, I don't, and and I also I don't like I don't put tracking numbers on them either anymore because it's like God's. Oh, there's so many steps just to mail something, and it's like just it goes. They get it. I'm good. And if I need to resend, what if somebody says it didn't show up? Okay, I'll resend it to you. Not a big deal. That like that that. That extra five dollars is is much more. I'm fine with that, versus all the extra hour it's going to take to put every label and track. It's a lot of work. I know. I know. It is a lot of work. Uh, but uh, there you go. If you want a spirit flask or a bunk bed bell, you can still get one signing up at ghostpodcast.com for a yearly EPP uh, membership. Uh, so tonight we had a trick or treating in the rain. Yeah, you were the the cool dad that kept getting out with the kids, and I was the mom Dry in the mom. car. I was driving you from house to house in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have been better if you're like in a big white van or something. That'd have been really cool. <laughs> right, <laughs> with a puppy and extra candy. I think we're the only ones in our neighborhood trick or treating tonight. Normally, there's like a lot of kids around, but it was a good downpour going on, so we were the uh, the only ones out there. Uh, Okay, so uh, going back to the, the candy discussion that we were talking about uh -huh. before, and by the way, if you want to get a ghost story in, this is your last call to do it at 216-446-7810, 216-446-7810, 216-GHOST10 to call in your ghost story. Um, e e we were talking about our favorite uh, candies. I is Butterfinger your favorite? Is that... If, if, you, if you were going around as a child mm -hmm. and you said, I want... 
eighty percent of my bag to be this candy when you were twelve or uh, ten year old Jenny? No. What would it have been back then? No, ten year old Jenny had a lot of Halloweens where either because we lived so far out in the country, there was yeah. no trick or treating like in a neighborhood. We had to go to town, and if it was too cold or too wet or whatever, did you ever get to go trick or treating? Not in my neighborhood. I did as a kid. I okay. went trick or treating. We had safe Halloween where you go to businesses. Well, uh, other than the 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 nursing home that you had the tragic experience. Okay, at. that was when I was very little. Okay. Okay. I did get to go trick or treating, but okay. once we moved to Kansas, trick or treating was off, and so uh, we would go and get two bags of whatever we wanted. Okay. So it was always the Twizzlers. And I think the Hershey Minis. Okay. Um, but it was as an adult that Butterfinger kind of became my thing. And like, mm -hmm. I've always loved Butterfinger like in a blizzard. Sure. But I, I still gravitate towards Twizzlers. Okay. So that would be what you would get. Yeah. Okay. I think the 10-year-old me would have picked Heath and probably Butterfinger. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the, uh, the Reese's. Not, not the pieces. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the cups. What about the Reese's Cups with the pieces in it? That's a new thing, and that's just... I've never tried that yet. Okay. I know one of our kids has some of those, and yeah. I'm I'll go like... steal those as soon as we're done with the show <laughs> and say, no, you never had that, honey. No. That, no, I don't know what you're talking about. But I always thought the Reese's were the best, the, the butter, the whole cup, the big ones, mm -hmm. not the minis, because it was literally half the size of a full candy bar pack, because the candy bar pack, you get two of them in. Sure. It's like, well, this is as close as you're going to get uh, to a, uh, a full pack. I like the minis. You Let's steal uh, them easier. Let's go to a caller at uh, 928. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Sierra from Yuma, Arizona. Hey, Sierra. Welcome to the program. Let's hear your story. So I was just wanting to call in a story since it's Halloween mm -hmm. um, about my daughter. Um, she had seen a little girl ghost in the middle of the night. She said it was probably a couple months back. She was asleep. Um, when she woke up in the middle of the night, she opened her eyes and she said she saw a little girl watching her. Um, she was pretty scared. She didn't really know what to think of it because we, you guys talk about it all the time on the show. Kids don't know really what a ghost is. Sure. So it kind of freaked us. It kind of freaked out the adults in the house. Um, uh, months later, probably a couple weeks later, my husband's at home by himself. He's doing his homework for school. And he hears, like, back back room door, I guess, close. Is they close by themselves? Sorry, I'm a little nervous. It's okay. And um, then he hears um, disembodied scream every once in a while in our house. So I just thought I'd call and share that. How, what did you do when, when she came to you with that story? We were trying to make sense of um, what she thought she might have seen um we asked her what the little girl looked like she didn't describe anything scary um all we kind of told her was that it was a guardian angel watching her because i asked her what she felt and she didn't feel any kind of intimidation she didn't really feel anything so i just kind of told her that it was an angel watching her because i didn't want to scare her I actually had a similar type experience as a child from the little girl point of view. Mm -hmm. I woke up one morning and it was way before my parents were ready for me to wake up. I was pretty little. And when I woke up, it was like this fog was floating over me and just I, I could see it and it was not huge, but they uh, the the fog just kind of it didn't give me an ominous feeling. And then it went straight through the wall to what would be my parents' room. And I don't know what happened after that. And I told my parents about that. And I said, you know, I saw this this weird, like, fog thing. And it felt like a kid. And I remember saying that. And they were like, oh, okay, you were probably just dreaming. Well, as an adult, I found out eons later that, like, the next night, they saw a fog go, for, like, from my room through the wall across the room and then out the window and they only saw it the once and i only saw it the once but it, it didn't feel ominous at all timing wise was it around the same time then yeah it was like the next day they saw no. that so i think they believed me then but they weren't going to be like oh yeah sweetie actually that for real was a ghost because sure. we saw it too 
and, and, and really, I mean, you're looking back, I mean, there, there's a lot of things you look back and go, eh, but with that, I mean, would you have handled it much different or how would you have handled it? You know, let, let's say it happens tomorrow and you get that, that report from one of our kids. How would you have handled, how would you handle it? I would have asked how it made them feel mm -hmm. to know whether or not it was something ominous or maybe sure. something watching over. Sure. And, you know, I don't know that I would go ahead and say, oh, well, you probably saw a ghost, but I would kind of wait and see if there's any more evidence. Sure. But they never told me until I was an adult that yeah. that for sure happened. That there was something. Yeah. So I thought I was nuts for like 20 years. How did it make you feel when you found that out? When you found that there was some validation to that story? Kind of like, well, I guess I'm not <laughs> nuts. Thanks for letting me know. But, <laughs> All these years later. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I don't, as a parent, know how I would address that with yeah. one of my kids. So I kind of get it. But it was nice to get that validation, even though it was decades later. Sure. It, it, it's it's a tough subject to handle with kids when mm -hmm. they have those experiences, um, and and what Definitely. do you do? You know, how do you handle that? Thank you for calling in and sharing your experience with us. We really do appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. You take care. <laughs> it's gonna be a caller at uh, four eight four. What is your name and where are you calling from? My name is Jeremiah. I'm calling from Allentown, Pennsylvania. All right, Jeremiah, you got a ghost story for us tonight? Yes, I do. All right, let's hear it. It's, it, it, it took place. It took place a few years ago. I, I, just, I moved into a new house, and when I first moved in, my daughter kept telling me in her room that she was seeing a little boy come out of the bathroom and go down towards the steps. Okay. And so, since it was, since it was a new house, I didn't want to get everybody scared. I just kind of like downplayed it a little bit, you know. So then my wife started telling me she saw the same little boy, you know, same thing. I didn't want to get everybody else in the house scared. I kind of downplayed it, downplayed it. Well, I had a spot in the basement that was like a, a small finished room, kind of set up for like a studio. I had a, like the keyboard down there, my computer and stuff. So I'm down there. Now I have a daughter at the time. She was only six or seven years old. And she would always try to sneak up on me and come down the stage and scare me, you know. So one night I'm down there, the at the corner of my eye, I see what I think is my daughter coming down, sneaking up on me, trying to scare me. And I seen it. Not only did I see it, but I kind of felt it. It came down the steps, zipping around the basement, and it came through the doorway up behind me and was, like, hiding up under the chair. So I'm, since I thought I knew she was there, I turned around real quick. I'm like, ha, trying to scare her first, you know? And when I turned around, there was nobody there. So that freaked me out. I ran upstairs. I'm telling my wife, you know, where's Angelisa? Oh, she's upstairs in the shower. I'm like, no way. Like, I just, I think I just seen what you guys were talking about, this, this, this ghost of this little, this little boy, you know? So it was kind of freaky. And there was some other stuff that happened in that house after that. But that was like the start of, that was like the, start of the whole thing well, in that house. Expound upon that then for us. The start of the thing. What happened beyond that? After that, they kind of calmed down for a while. Which is, I, I noticed like the next year the, at the same time, it kind of started up again. Where me and my son were down in the basement in the same spot. And I was, I had a dartboard down there and I was <clears throat> videotaping him playing the darts. And as I'm looking in my phone at the video that I'm taking, I see something come flying up onto the screen. So I, I kind of backed up a little bit thinking it was like a bug or something flying around the basement, but I didn't see anything. And it wasn't until the next day that I actually looked at the video and I caught a video of, a, of an orb flying around on my phone, but I couldn't see it like with, with my eyes, I seen it through the phone. It's, when I started zooming in, it wasn't only one orb, it was two of them. It was going up the side of my screen and down and back around the other side. <clears throat> so I videotaped that orb. <clears throat> and I told my dad about it. He comes over and he's like, is there any spirits in the house? Let yourself be known. I'm like, listen, don't do that here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to start that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to start that, you know. And then, <laughs> and then like a week later, I'm at work and my wife calls me on the phone. She's like, Jeremy, your daughter's acting very strange. I'm like, well, what's going on? Well, I was in the kitchen washing dishes and... She saw something come past my shoulder and go f zip it out the window. And I was like, what? She's like, yes, I asked her what it was. And she said, all she kept saying was blue dress, blue face. Hmm. She's seen some kind of little girl walking through the kitchen out the window. But the freaky part about it was the girl wasn't walking on the ground. She was up in the air by the cabinets walking and like out the kitchen window. So she saw something weird that day. And then... 
after that, <clears throat> we were all in the we were all in the living room. This is like in the same two week period. We we're all in the living room one night. <clears throat> Sorry, and we're watching TV, and we had a huge rice pot. I don't know how to explain it. It's probably about a foot, two feet by two feet wide. It's a big pot. It was pushed to the back of the stove, and we're all sitting there watching TV, and we hear this bang. We didn't we didn't know what it was. My first reaction was I thought somebody was trying to break into my back door. And so I, when I turn around and look, the first thing I see is my dog, which was in the kitchen. He wasn't allowed in the living room. He stood in the kitchen by the gate. And he was with his head turned, looking towards the back door. And so we get up to see what's going on. And the rice pot was pushed off the stove and laying underneath the, 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 um, the, the kitchen table. It was like, there's no way it could have fell by itself. And it wasn't the dog because the dog was laying down, turning around and looking like, what the heck just happened? You know? <clears throat> we take some force. That's really, yeah. what, what does your gut tell you? I mean, give some questions, Jen. Yeah, my my question is not so much for you, but just in general, the the quote unquote same time next year goes the one that show up at around the same time of the year every year, but then they're not there the rest of the time. What would you classify that as, Tony? Is that a type of residual ghost? I mean, I, I don't really know what to put that in, but we've heard that quite a bit where they just around a significant date that, you know, maybe you'll later find out what that date meant or whatever, but it's it's not always like Halloween they show up or anything yeah. like that. I mean, you, you have like different types of residuals or sometimes you have where it's, it's just, it's going on day after day after day uh -huh. after day, same, it's just, it's just like on loop uh, yeah. all the time. And then you have some where it seems to be whatever cycles of energy with our atmosphere and everything seem to then then re-trigger that because it, 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 it creates the same atmosphere as it was before. Um, so that would be a form of, uh, of residual. I mean, and, and you kind of can understand that too, but just as, as a living person, when you go through uh, life, sometimes you're like, damn, this feels like I was just here before. Tonight, when we were driving back uh, from trick-or-treating, we were at the same stoplight at the same place, getting back into our neighborhood. And it was rainy last year. Mm -hmm. It was rainy this year. And we were stopping right there by the highway. And we were last year going, ah, shit, I think it's going to rain. We're probably not going to be able to trick or treat very much in our neighborhood. And it was the exact same clouds, same atmosphere. It, just, it, it was that same everything. Everything yeah. was just exactly as it was one year prior. Um, so I think that, that that sometimes triggers these things to... Uh, to repeat themselves, I, I, I'm curious with our with our caller here. I mean, what's your take on this? What do you think is going on? Well, I mean, I don't live in that house anymore, but I think that what was going on there was just like the way you said. Maybe something happened at that time of year, sometime in the past, and every single yeah. year it kind of reoccurs like an ongoing thing. Yeah, so whatever's whatever goes up there. Like, I, the reason why I noticed that is because I lived in another house that had, I had stuff going on in there too. Nothing really bad. But I noticed when I first moved in there, it was in November. We had weird things happen and then it just stopped. And then the next year it started up again, but it was around the same time of year where it just started getting cold. That's what I noticed. It was happening every year <coughs> at the same time. <laughs> and something, so, I, mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't it's something interesting with, yeah. with, with residual and, and just hauntings in general. We are entering a phase right now, and I, I just, I've always kind of suspected this, but I had an interview uh, yesterday with a demonologist, and we were talking about um, times of year and, and when things tend to uh, spike up. And in, in his many years of doing this stuff, he says October to about uh, March or so is, is pretty much high time. For this it's it's not warm out everything's kind of condensed everything's uh a little more shut up um and and that's when he seems to see more things happen not only in the demon world but just in the, the world of hauntings in general so i have a question i'm not yeah. trying to play devil's ad no. devil's advocate intended but i'm just <laughs> curious is that <coughs> is that more so because people are indoors and they notice that in their environment they notice things being different because october to march is more so where you're you're starting to spend more time inside than outside and i wonder is is it truly a spike in the activity or is it just a spike in it being noticed i would say emotions are high and condensed 
Yeah. From now to uh, you know Christmas, uh, and then into January, you're kind of cooped up. Uh, so I think it's a high condensed emotional area. That makes sense. In homes. It's like a can. It's cabin fever. It is. It, it, it's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go from really big highs to really big lows really quick. And, and even for those who are not prone to do that, everyone has that. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, it affects people differently. Um, so you're kind of in the really, you know, the can of emotion area here uh, for the year where you have, uh, you know, the ups and downs very, very fast. Uh, so it only makes sense, though, on the other side, then, if... if there's the emotions are going to repeat themselves for that to be a high, a highly condensed area for it to happen. Sure. So we're amongst the haunting season. <laughs> we're kicking it off, everybody. <laughs> we're going to do a little uh, New Year's uh, ball, right? Or uh, a ghost to ball over here. A to, skull that drops. A skull and that drops, yes. Happy haunting. <laughs> happy haunting season, everybody. <laughs> and I'll dress up as Dick Clark. It'll be great. That's not nice. Which Dick Clark should I be? The one uh, when he was... No. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for calling in and sharing that story with us. Really, We really do appreciate that. All right. Thank you. And happy Halloween. I had a, a comment here or a question that was brought up uh, to us uh, earlier in the program. Uh, Halloween movies. And we're going to do two versions of this. Okay. Childhood uh-huh. and adult. So 10-year-old Jenny, uh, and it can be the same answer if you want. Uh, what was your favorite Halloween movie at the time when you were 10 to watch? When I was 10, yeah. Hocus Pocus was brand new, and it was awesome, and it's still, we watched it last night. It's, it's still your favorite to this day. It's still my favorite. Okay, well, prior to Hocus Pocus. Okay, okay. Eight-year-old Jenny. Eight-year-old Jenny? There yeah. was this old, weird 80s version of The Worst Witch, which Netflix has rebooted. The Worst Witch? The Worst Witch. I'd never heard of that. Yeah, and, and Netflix has rebooted it. I'm not sure if it's a movie or a series, but it's about a little girl that goes to witch school, very Harry Potter-ish. Okay. And she just doesn't quite fit in, and it's about her. But there was like this weird 80s version, and I loved that movie. I would watch it every year right before I got dressed to go out and go trick-or-treating. And it's it's so weird that I, I wouldn't probably get I, my girls i know probably be like mom this is weird but <laughs> it was it was just one of those things i would sure. always watch every year i can't tell you what year it came out but i know it's just one of those that's that's odd the little girl in it was the one that played in wizard of oz 2 with the weird tin man and everything oh with the heads the same Ooh. same little girl yeah so that that was my favorite i guess as a kid um as an adult I love the Halloween movies, like the Michael Myers mm-hmm. Halloween movies, because I, I don't... <laughs> it's so weird. We're doing a ghost Halloween show, but I don't like to watch ghostly Halloween shows. Yeah. They freak me out too much. Mm-hmm. So i much rather watch a psychopathic killer. It makes it so much better. It does. It just makes it, le- it, makes it much more uh, less realistic for a psychopathic killer <laughs> versus zombies coming at you. I know it makes no sense, but <laughs> most of the things in my head make no sense, so it just feels right at home. <laughs> we were at Trigger Trading tonight. There was a great uh, Michael Myers walking around. The, oh, the, he uh, was awesome. Tall guy and everything. And uh, Libby was like, he has a great costume. And, and she even went up to him and said, you have a great costume. And I said, that's where he says, it's not a costume. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, He was great. My uh, favorite, though, my favorite was the little, like, two-year-old. <coughs> His parents made a little walker, and he had the balloons. He was dressed as the little old man from Up. It yes. was the cutest thing. He was great. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen a costume that cute in years. That was very good. Uh, childhood movie, uh, I would say Boogity. Yeah. Or Bride of Boogity, uh, which was a Disney Sunday night movie. I'm curious if anyone else out there rem- remembers this uh, this this program, uh, and and I I loved it so much. Had it on VHS. We taped it off a of television, and we would watch it. I or I would watch it over and over and mm-hmm. over as a child. And when we started dating, <laughs> uh, like I, I, it was probably it, it was, was it was our, our first first Halloween, yeah, our first Halloween together. I told you this, and this is prior to Netflix. This is prior to. I mean, YouTube was kind of in its infancy. Yeah. Uh, it, it existed, but it wasn't big yet. Um, so it wasn't as easy just to find every obscure thing out there as it is today. You used to have to like really dig uh, for this. And she found somebody on, on eBay. 
I think it was eBay. I don't know. It was some random person. They had a a, a burned DVD copy of it off of the Disney Sunday night movie. <laughs> And and you got me Boogity and Bride of Boogity. I did the two because the, the, it was like a, a, a two part thing, and uh, it was awesome. <laughs> it was like, okay, I'll marry you right now. Well, and, I felt uh, like that's the least <laughs> I could do because the first pumpkin you found was like Labor Day weekend. You found a pumpkin, yeah. And when you brought it over for us to light, it had my engagement ring. <laughs> that's in true. It. Yeah. So we've always had kind of a Halloweenish, yeah thing like well yeah. before the show even ever began yeah but uh yeah uh as an adult uh you know i i, I love the zombie movies um I, and the thing is i haven't seen a ton of the more recent ones uh just because we're parents and i don't get to go to the movies um but you know the uh i'm excited about the new halloween i really love watching kind of the classics because uh, I never really watched those as a kid. Mm-hmm. So some of those are like almost brand new to me. Um, I did watch Halloween as like a teen. Um, I, I, I'm rediscovering like the uh, the George Romero follow-ups, like the uh, Day of the Dead and all that, and going, oh, these are great. Um, zombie stuff I love. Shaun of the Dead is a good one. Um, zombie World is a good one. I love those. You mean Zombie Land? Zombie Land, yeah. Yeah, Zombie Land. I want to see World War Z. I've never seen that one. I've not seen that one either. But um, we should, we I should. was just about to say something that's completely gone. <laughs> I found my first gray hair today, so it's just full on middle age right now. You're fucked. I know. <laughs> one more caller here. Let uh, eight hundred one. Uh, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Eva Lani. I'm calling from Salt Lake City, Utah. Hey, Hi. welcome to the program. Let's hear your story. Well, before I start, I just have to say my favorite Halloween movie as a kid was Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. as an adult, my favorite one is the Freddy Krueger movies. <laughs> We've never watched those. I still no. can't do those. No? No, that and Jason. But I'll watch <laughs> Michael Myers all day long. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> They're really good. But, okay, so my story actually involves where I work. Um, and I'm actually working right now, so it's going to be kind of fun to tell. <laughs> so I work for a laboratory, and um, they recently moved me upstairs. And the area that I work is um, near a hospital, and it's kind of an older area. So the building that I'm in is pretty old. And there's, um, like, the whole area is just old. But anyway, so they moved me upstairs, and I've always gotten a weird... Um, like uncomfortable vibe in this building so I never really went anywhere by myself because I thought I'd run into someone so when they moved me upstairs and at night like right now I'm the only one up on the top floor <laughs> and um, there was one night I'd probably been moved up here maybe like two weeks and I heard a um, just a crash like, I had my office door open, and it sounded like someone took one of our shelves and just threw it to the floor. Like, a huge crash. And I, like, run out of my office, and I go look, and nothing's pushed over. Nothing at all. <laughs> so, I was like, okay, that's a little weird. So, I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm like, that's kind of, that's not normal. So, I go back to my office, and then a little bit later... I came walking out of my office, and there's a bigger office on the left where the door faces as I'm, like, walking out. And I got this overwhelming male presence that was pissed that I was here. Like, he was angry that I was here. And I walked out, and as I was walking out and I felt it, I could see something out of the corner of my eye standing in the back corner And I did like a double take and I looked because I saw like a shadow darker than the dark, about six, seven foot tall, standing in the corner. And it was just anger. Just I could feel it just pushing out of this room. Just like you're in my space. And he was pissed. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to pretend I didn't see it because I don't want to like acknowledge that it's here. So I went walking out to the hall and as I got to the door to leave because it's a locked area 
I felt him come out of the office, come run behind me like he was trying to force me out. Like he was going to follow me out in the hallway. And I turned to look because I could feel something standing right there behind me. And I turned and nobody was there. And I used some color from Metal Force, but I told him to leave me the F alone. And then he wasn't allowed to follow me home. And he wasn't allowed to irritate me anymore or bug me or scare me because I wasn't scared of him. And when I walked out and shut the door, the feeling was completely gone. So the weird thing, though, is I came back the next day and the whole floor was fine. I couldn't feel anything. And there's two separate ones up on this floor. There's a male presence in that office. And the other one makes noises, which is a female and she makes noises to kind of get you on edge, which feeds the other one. But the male comes and goes, like he's not here all the time. Mm-hmm. And after that night, I could still feel him in there and feel him around all the other offices but mine. But I'm the only one that he does not aggravate. Like he does not bother me anymore, which I find kind of funny that he, like I can feel him in there and I get uncomfortable, but he knows to like stay in there. But, yeah, it was very, um, the first time I felt, because I've never felt anything that dark, like that dark and that angry and that just upset at me. And I, it was just like, I went home and I just like sat in my car for a minute. I was like, okay, I need to make sure I don't feel anything before I drive home. (laughs) I think it's not, not everything that is, you know, angry and dark is necessarily demonic. Yeah. Uh, quite often, you, you are dealing yeah. with a, you know, a, basically an angry person or a person that would have been cantankerous as a, a human being, uh, and, and sometimes they will, you know, still be that on the other side, and, and that may be what you're dealing with. But they may have found some respect for you, and that's why you're feeling that. Just, just as you, there, there can be angry bosses and like, oh my God, I, I really do not approve of the way you're treating these people, but they really respect you, and you're like, mm-hmm. what do you do in those situations? And uh, it's weird because sometimes yeah. to get that respect, you have to do exactly what yeah. you did and kind of stand up to them. Yeah. So I, I yeah. think that's probably And I've had to do it a couple times, too. Yeah. They're probably operating. Like, from, he'll, he'll, go ahead. I said they're probably operating from their same uh, MO that they did when they were alive. Yeah. 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 Like, I've, I've talked to my husband about it, too, because I've recently found out that I am um, an empath. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I, and it's really bad here at work. Like I just instantly get stressed when I walk in because I can just feel everybody's like anxiety and stuff. Yeah. And it's just been interesting that I still have to tell that presence every so often to leave me alone. So it's not like it's a one and done. Like it's every so often. But yeah, I've wanted to call in and share that for a while because... (laughs) <laughs> really freaked me out the first time. I was like, "That's weird." Well, I'm glad you but. were able to call in and share that and kind of get that off your chest. And and you know, you're not alone, obviously, in, in that sort of thing happening. And yeah. and there's some reasoning to it. So mm-hmm. so thank you for calling in and sharing that experience with us uh, tonight. We really definitely do appreciate that here on uh, on Halloween night. <laughs> And that's going to wrap us up because I have a battery on this computer that I, I pull over here and it says... <laughs> it's uh, about to die. It's like, you're going to die really soon. So that's going to wrap up our uh, uh, Halloween episode of the night. But that's good. We, we went well beyond even what I was expecting to do tonight. So thank you guys for calling in and sharing your ghost stories with us. If you like the program, become an EPP Extra Podcast person because we do this thing year-round. And uh, you get to all the bonus episodes of the show, all 200 20 something now uh, at uh, ghostpodcast.com advanced episodes of the program everything uh, you get as an EPP for five bucks a month check it out at ghostpodcast.com and keep us on the air thank you for joining us (laughs) for Halloween tonight Uh, it's been really fun so uh, until next time for Jenny Bruski and Tony Bruski thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories online everybody happy Halloween (laughs) 